Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Claudia. Uh, I'm, I work with marketing for five years now, and it's been a year and a half that I started working with game marketing. Uh, is everyone hearing me nice or is everyone have, is anyone having trouble? Mm -hmm. uh, if anyone has any mm -hmm. trouble, let me know and I can talk louder or try to adjust my mic. And if any word in my English is not uh, hearable, I, I don't, don't remember the correct word right now, uh, but if, if anyone has any trouble understanding a word or something, please let me know that I can try to repeat it. Um, so uh, we are here for the Game Jam Plus incubation process. Uh, and I'll be talk talking a bit, a little bit with you guys about marketing, and then I'll talk a little bit mm -hmm. of marketing in games. But we'll focus more on marketing because it. I can try and go directly to game marketing, but if you don't understand the basics of marketing, it won't help you to know about game marketing specifically. So I'll focus more on marketing as a whole, and then we'll talk a little bit of, about game marketing, and I'll leave some uh, sources for you that you can start reading later um, and understanding uh, a little bit more of what you can do, of what marketing can do for you. Uh, I have a presentation here. Let me see. Yes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, so. That's what we'll be talking about today. Uh, what is marketing and how it can help both you uh, as a person, as your studio, and what it can do to help your games, right? Uh, so we'll talk about these three topics. Uh, we'll define what marketing is. Uh, we'll talk about the two different definitions of marketing uh, that they are pretty close to each other. Uh, then we'll talk about a, a little bit of the basics of marketing, the foundations. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry because uh, when we uploaded the, the presentation to, <laughs> to show you guys, it got a little bit, um, the, the layout is not as good as it, as it looked before, before uploading. Uh, and I didn't have enough time to, to correct it, but uh, if you guys, I think everyone has, uh, uh, I, I think the guys from the produ production of Game Jam Plus have your emails, so if anyone wants the, 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 the presentation, we can send to you guys after, so you can have all, all of the information that it's here. It's not much, but if you want it, you can have it, it's okay. Uh, then we talk a little bit about the foundations of marketing, and later on uh, we will talk a, a little bit about what we can do to make our, our games seen by the people we want them seen. And then, if you still have some questions, I will do my best to answer them if I know, or I can try to look it up for you guys. So. Uh, there's a lot of different definitions of marketing. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Uh, some people have a very negative view of marketing. Some people have a, 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 uh, a very positive view of marketing. And But a lot of the times we get like, what exactly is marketing? Because if you just type marketing in Google, like the first 10 results will each give you a different definition of what exactly is marketing. Uh, so I chose two definitions uh, because I like them the most. Uh, the first one is from the marketing, the American Marketing Association. Um, the, it's not showing the correct name here, but okay. Uh, and they define marketing as the activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communication, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. Uh, so 
for them, marketing is everything related to creating value for the society. Uh, so um, it's not just the product, it's ju not just what you do with the pro product. It's everything uh, from creating it to delivering it to the customers, you know? So all the, the, the whole process for them is what, what marketing is. And then we have the definition from Philip Kotler that for him, it's the science. It's a science. Marketing is a science for Philip Kotler. He is considered the father of marketing. And that's why I brought him here uh, because his definition, I think he, it's, um, it's one of the definitions that will fit a lot with, we'll be talking about. Uh, so for him, uh, Marketing is the science and art of exploring, creating, and delivering value to satisfy the needs of a target market at a profit. So, if you are doing the, if you are doing it, obviously he is uh, self, someone who who he's in he's in internship. So obviously his view is uh, towards uh, the market. Uh, and obviously he will be talking about profit and everything. Uh, so uh, if you're creating a product that doesn't turn profit, it won't fit what he sees as marketing. But the important part for me from his definition is the beginning, is the creating, is the science of an art of exploring, creating and delivering value to satisfy the needs of a target market. I would, for me, if I were, if I were to, to define market, I would use the beginning of his definition, you know, because um, for me, uh, marketing is looking at something that you have and saying, how can I convince other, other people that this is something worth uh, their time? It doesn't, doesn't even need to be uh, their money. It's worth their time. Uh, that's what marketing is for me showing having a product or having uh, a book a text or something and that i need to show people and convince them to spend their time on it uh, and i think that's for me that's the the real uh idea behind marketing um so what what are the basics what are the fun foundations of marketing uh, I like to, to talk about this, about a professor, professor that once told me. Um, I don't know if it will make sense for someone who is not from Brazil. Uh, so I think maybe I'll change a little bit what he said, because um, he was, we were at, at a uni class on marketing, and he was saying, like, everything we do every day is marketing. When you're, when you're going to a job interview, you are doing marketing. You have to convince the person who is interviewing you that you are the right person for that job. So you are selling yourself for them. You have to sell yourself as a professional. How will you do that? Using marketing. You are marketing yourself as a professional. When you're going out for a pub and then you are like, oh, I would like to hit that person up and maybe we can go out, we can kiss or something, you will be using marketing to convince that person that you are worth their time. So everything is marketing. Um, but so we are constant, constantly doing marketing, even if we are not realizing. So with that in mind, thinking that everything is marketing and that we are constantly doing marketing. Uh, I want to talk some marketing skills and strategy, strategies that are not that obvious sometimes. Um, and I will start with the four P's of marketing. It's not that easy to read because layout, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the four P's of marketing are like the basics, the basics. Uh, Sometimes, uh, right now, they are using more piece, uh, but I want to keep it like 
OG. I want to use wanted to use the OG because from what I talked to to the people at Game Jam or Plus organization, like a lot of you haven't seen anything of marketing yet. So I want to keep it like pretty OG. <laughs> uh, so the four piece of market marketing are it sounds pretty obvious, but it's not that much. Uh, it's product, price, place, and promotion. Product, uh, what it, what are you selling? Uh, and not just uh, oh, I have a I have a new cell phone to to sell uh, because okay, you have a new cell phone to sell, but so does Apple, so does Samsung, so does a thousand other companies. So, what is your product? Uh, what why do you have a different product? If there is a lot of product like yours in the market. Why are you making a new one? What makes it different from the rest? Uh, who will be buying? Who, who do you want to target? Who, who will be buying your phone? Who, who you want to buy your phone? You know? Uh, so product is not just the physical aspect of the product. It's everything that it's like, why did you create that? Why did you make that up in the first place? Um, and you have to like list everything uh, when you are talking about product. List every single thing about your product. Oh, I created a new phone because the ones that we have right now doesn't have enough battery or because their camera is not good because they are not really cell phones anymore. They are computers and we I think that we should go back to, to cell phones. List everything. Who will be buying? Oh no, I think I target, uh, I created a new phone because I want to target uh, older people, the older generation, the people who are not as, uh, who doesn't have as much uh, technological expertise as us. Uh, so they have trouble using a uh, touch screen or they have trouble reading and things like that. Why did you create that product in the first place? Who is it for and what makes it different? That's your product. That's what you have to think about when you're thinking about your product. When you go talk about price, um, you have to think about what are your costs when you are going to decide what price are you going to charge for your product? What are your costs? Because it has to be at least cost effective. You can't be taking... Uh, um, uh, losses on your product, uh, unless you are obviously uh, in non-profit organization, then it's a little bit different. But that's not the case for us here, so we can we cannot be taking losses on our product. So it has to at least be cost effective. Uh, so you have to put down what what did it cost you to make this product? Um, how much? Are your competitors charging? If you if you look at your competitor, is he charging a hundred dollars? Is he charging fifty dollars? Is he charging a thousand dollars? What is he charging, and what is considered cheap or expensive in your industry for the type of product you are selling? So, for example, uh, a PlayStation right now uh, here in Brazil costs 5,000 reais, right? So if you're creating a console right now, uh, you can't be charging more than that because it will be exp too expensive and you are not you are not Sony. No one is going to take a gamble on you if you're charging more than, than Sony because you are not, uh, you are not well known in the industry yet. So you have to think about that, but you cannot charge it 50 reais because it's too cheap. It will, it will not cover your costs for creating it. So you have to balance it out. You have to think about uh, not only what are your costs, because sometimes we think about our costs and then we'll go, okay, so it costs me a uh, hundred dollars to make this product. So I'm going to charge 150. 
but then you are devaluing and all your competitors are charging like a thousand dollars you are devaluing your product people will look at your product and be like okay so if everyone else is charging a thousand why is this person charging only 150. it's because their product is not good so we cannot think only of costs you know we can we have to look at the market as a whole and find a place in the middle we can charge less than our competitors if it's possible for our costs but we can charge two less you know we have to think about uh what people will think when they see your product if they look at it and they say oh no this is too cheap it's because they will think that it doesn't have um doesn't have quality because cheap right now uh, in the society we live in right now cheap equals something with no quality so we cannot go too cheap but we cannot go too expensive either we have to find that middle ground that works for each industry uh, for place uh, you have to think where is your target audience at? That's I think that's the most important question uh, that you 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 have to ask yourself. Because if your target audience is at, for example, uh, Brazil, it doesn't matter. It, it will not work if you are selling your product in Argentina, because your target audience is in another country. So where is your target audience? You have to think about it and decide um, where they are. And, and not only think about it, you have to research it and see if where they are and see if you can make it into their market. Because if there's no way you can enter that market, then like it doesn't even make sense for you to keep the project on. You will have to rethink the whole project, you know? So think about where your target audience is and where you where you will be marketing your product. Those two questions, they have to have the same answer. Where is your target audience at? Brazil, where you'll be marketing your product? Brazil. If they don't have the same answer, you are doing something wrong. They, you have to answer these two questions with exactly the same place, you know? Uh, and then promotion is everything you will be doing to catch people's attention. Uh, so that means, will you be advertising in magazines? Will you be advertising in social media? Will you be doing no advertisement at all? Will you just count on people talking about your product and going viral on social media? Uh, will you be uh, sending your product to influencers for them to talk about your product? Uh, so everything that you can do to get people talking and to catch people's attentions. That's what promotion is. And we have like a very long list of everything you can do for that. Um, so that's the four pieces of marketing and they are really important. Uh, so when you start a, pro a project, when you think about starting a project, uh, always put those four words in in a paper or in a word document and fill those in answer those questions those small questions you know what what is your, what it is that you're selling who is it for what makes it good unique why would you buy your product that's a very good question as well uh why would you why would you make it and why would you buy it would you buy your own product that's uh, something because those questions that you will answer in product price and place will help you with the promotion part afterwards. So it's really important that you put that in a, in a paper. And then we have the SWOT matrix. I don't know if everyone ha if anyone has seen this before. Uh, we use this for a lot of things, uh, not only in marketing for um, for business as a whole, uh, and that's, uh, but we have to do this for every product. It's not just as a business. For a business, we, you will do this for your game studio as a whole. But when you decide to make a 
a specific game, do this for your game uh, and think about it. What are your strengths? What are your weakness, your opportunities and your threats? Uh, it's really important to make this for each different product because um, for what is a strength in your company is not may be a weakness for your specific product. Something that can be an opportunity for you may not be an opportunity for your product. So it's important to do this every single time you decide to start a project, a different project, you know? Um, so think about what makes you different from your competitors. What makes uh, you stand out? What, uh, what will make you buy your product? What would make, uh, what difference could your product make in society as a whole or in the industry you are working on? Those are all strengths that you can see. Uh, and the opportunities, think about your industry and think about your, or our society and the country you're living in and see what's happening around you and see what of those things can help you, uh, can help your product, can help your company, you know? Uh, for example, right now in Brazil, the Big Brother uh, reality show has started. And for a lot of companies, uh, that can be uh, an opportunity to do some marketing, to do some strategies uh, with the the... the with the reality show itself and the, the, the partici participants, you know, for, for others, this can be a big threat. It's something that can hurt them very hard. Uh, so you have to be prepared for everything that is happening around you because you can be using that to your advantage or it can be hurtful to you. So always pay attention to everything that is happening, even if it seems like it's not, um, even if it seems that like it's not, how can I say? Even if it seems like it's not related to your product or to your company, uh, it can be. Even if it's like totally afar from you, you can be like, oh no, but this cannot help me or it cannot hurt me at all look at it again and think maybe because sometimes we let things go by without realizing that we could use it so always be attention pay attention to everything that it's that is hurting you and also uh, for the weaknesses i think this is the question you have to ask what can you improve uh, of your product uh, do, are you creating a, a, a game? Does it have a lot of bugs? Uh, does it have uh, a camera that it's not uh, as stable as it should be? Does it have uh, an art that could be better? Uh, it's getting really popular in, I don't know, uh, uh, a different country, a specific, very, uh, a specific country. For example, something that happens a lot, a lot of time here in Brazil, and I'm sure it happens in a lot of countries. Uh, we don't have a lot of the games, the the AAA games. A lot of the times, they don't have uh, Portuguese, uh, 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 both sound in Portuguese or subtitles. Most of the time, they only have subtitles, but they don't have. Uh, dubbing in Portuguese. So that isn't that a weakness, especially if the game is going really viral in Brazil or in Portugal or in Angola or all the con other countries that speak Portuguese. If the game is going viral in that country, isn't it a weakness that you don't have dubbing in that language? Maybe, isn't it possible for you to look up, see how much it would cost for you to make dubbing? Because maybe that could improve your sales of that game in that specific in that specific country just because you paid attention that oh well that's a little bit of a flaw that we have there people in that count that specific country in that specific part of the 
the world are paying attention to our game, but we don't really have anything that it's targeted to them. Maybe we can see if it's um, viable. For us as uh, indie studio, studios, it's not always gonna be possible to do something like that because dubbing and subtitle and everything else costs, costs money. And we don't have a lot of money to be putting in a game all the time. But sometimes we can't, sometimes it's not that expensive. It's always worth looking into and see what you can do. And always communicating that you are doing that, you know? If you are like, oh, uh, we see you and we'll see what we can do. It's not always gonna be possible, but sometimes we, it, it will. And only and you saying to your target audience, your central audience, look, we are hearing you, what you're saying, we, we hear you, it makes a lot of difference that you let them know that you see what you, you are doing wrong and you will do what you can to change that. So be mindful of what people are saying, what you can and you cannot improve. And here, uh, let's talk a little bit of game marketing. Uh, the industry, we, uh, the game industry is a lot more um, helpful with each other than other industries. Uh, one thing that uh, I like to, before working with game marketing, I worked in tourism. I was doing marketing for a hotel uh, brand. Uh, and one thing that I like to say that it's a lot of different is how we deal with competitors. For example, when you are going, you, when you are traveling, uh, you will be staying in a hotel, but you'll be staying in one hotel only. So when you are traveling, you will be looking up different hotels for you to stay in, and you will choose one, the one that has the best marketing, the one that has the best pictures, the one that has the best reviews, the everything else. So. When you are working in that type of industry that you have to choose only one, it's one or another. Uh, when you are doing marketing for that type of uh, company, uh, you have to be really aggressive and you have to look at your competitors as rivals. Uh, so what are they doing that I'm not doing? And what can I do that they are not doing? You know, because the person who is staying at Hotel A is not going to stay at the Hotel B. But with games that you can take that and discard completely. Because when you look at competitors um, in games, you have to think that they are your allies. They are not rivals, they are your allies. Because person, the person who will be playing game A most likely will be playing your game as well. Um, so if you are making a survival horror game, for example. You will not look at big survival horror games as someone that you have to beat. You will be looking and saying, what did they do right? Not what they did, what they did that I can do better. But like, what did they do that made them uh, likable? Why did people like that game? And then you try to, tr in marketing, obviously, <laughs> let's not go into this like copying at other people's games, but like in marketing, what did they do in marketing that make people talk about them and do everything? So when you are, we are thinking of competitors in games, we are thinking of allies because if I'm doing a survivor horror game and you are doing a survivor horror game, we can talk to each other and be like, maybe shouldn't we join forces and do some um, some promotion where like you can buy both of our games at the same time because people who will be playing my game most likely will be, be will be playing yours as well because you don't have that urge in the gaming industry to choose only one uh, even if the people are not going to buy both games at the exactly same time they most likely will eventually buy both games uh, because that's how uh, gaming works. 
So what can we do uh, to make our games seen by people? Uh, here, uh, I want to, to say, uh, most of you, I think, probably already have a game in, in, in the works. So it won't be that good for now, but I'm talking about marketing for the future. Uh, and one thing is that when you start talking about your, when you think about creating a game, I would say that one of the first things you have to do is think about marketing. It's not the other way around. Marketing shouldn't be the last thing you think, of, think about. It should be the first. Because uh, here, for example, when I talk about uh, genre, what type of game you are making, uh, there are some genres in the... For example, I'm talking about Steam right now because uh, I think it's the... It's one of the, it's for computer games, it's the biggest uh, platform right now. Uh, if you look up uh, Steam right now, uh, you will see that there is a lot of puzzle and platform games uh, available there right now. But you will also see those are the games that have the worst uh, selling uh, of all of the games. Why? Because the genre is not popular. People are like the, the market for puzzle and platform games, it's oversaturated right now. So if you are making a game about that, you will have a lot of it will be a lot harder for you to market it and to like um, to stand out from everything else because there's a lot of games there right now. And most of them won't make a lot of money because it will be uh, the, the 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 audience will be pulverized. Uh, but if you look up uh, the games that have the biggest selling in all of the platform are city buildings games. Uh, they have been popular for computer since the nineties. It's been like thirty decades already of this genre being popular. But it also doesn't have a lot of uh, available games. It's one of the, the genres that have very few games uh, available in Steam right now. So maybe if you are starting a game, maybe let's think about, shouldn't we try to make a new city building game instead of going back to the puzzle platform that it's oversaturated? Uh, if you're already making the game and only now thinking about um, the marketing, you can change the genre of your game because it's already done, right? So that's why I say, think about marketing at the beginning of your project. Um, and then think about it. Is your target audience at the platform that you are looking for? Puzzle games are much more like, 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 like it at mobile, as mobile games, right? Uh, it's more likely for you to have success with a puzzle game on mobile platforms than it is for consoles or for computers. So think about it. Uh, if you want to make a puzzle for computer, will it be, will your target audience be there or shouldn't you rethink everything and make it a mobile game because it's more likely that that, that the audience that likes puzzle games are using mobiles right now instead of computers and consoles. Um, so those are all things that we need to think about uh, when making a game. You have to talk about your, com your competitors, see what they are doing, talk to them. Uh, one, one of the things I realized is that uh, we are a very close-knit community. So Talk to your competitors, talk to them and see what did you do that worked or what did you do that did not work at all? Uh, what could you recommend me? What wouldn't you? Uh, and see what the audience is saying about your competitors. Uh, are they playing their games? 
Are they liking their games? What they think are missing in their games that you could add to yours without uh, changing everything about your game. So be close to your competitors. That's a thing that I think it's really, really important. And then about communication. Uh, the best way to communicate with your audience would be to have a, a like a, a platform of your own. So uh, a website or a, a social media of your own, but that's not viable. Uh, it would be lovely if you could just talk to your audience in your own little space uh, that it would not depend on anyone else. Because right now we are, we are really dependent on social media. So if Twitter shuts down, we're fucked. Sorry for the bad language. But if Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, Discord, if they all shut down, they are third party uh, websites. If they shut down, what will, what, what will we do, right? So the best case scenario, we would have in the best, the best way for us to talk to our audience would be to have our own website uh, for communication. But that's not viable for small indie studios. Uh, it would be for triple A's, but not even them are doing that because it's a lot of, it's time consuming, money consuming. Uh, so most of the time we are using social media. And then we have to decide what type of social media uh, we will be doing. Um, we will be using Discord. Discord is a very good place to communicate and to have to create a relationship with our audience, but it's difficult. It's not, not that easy uh, because um, you have to be constantly uh, creating content for that specific platform. Um, and unless you have a very big audience already because of uh, previous games that you made, uh, it takes time to build a big enough community that is self-sustainable in Discord. So um, that would be the best one, but it's going to be time consuming. I haven't been able to turn our Discord yet into a, a self-sustainable platform. Uh, I will be trying to do this this year. I'll let you know if I, I, if I can have success and what I did if I do. Uh, but some other people have done it and it has worked wonders. Uh, we can have newsletters uh, that we can be sending to the audience and that it's like uh, a direct way of communication with them that's not dependent on social media uh, either. But like, like Discord, it's something that is going to take time to have enough uh, problems. Um, and um, I think that's, that's it. You have to look up uh, where your target audience is and see if you can make them migrate for your own space. If you can make them uh, be part of your Discord uh, server, if you can make them um, subscribe to our newsletter. Sometimes it's not going to be possible because you're going to be lost in their spam box or they will have like 300 Discord servers. So sometimes it's not worth it. You have to uh, see who your target audience is and decide if uh, this type of audience is likely to be there to be with you or not. Uh, something like most of the time, I think, in my opinion, from what I've seen, uh, younger people are more likely to prefer to be talked to in social media than in uh, with newsletter. But older games, like 30, 30 years plus, are more likely to enjoy uh, receiving a newsletter from you. So think about who your target audience is and see if it's possible to create a newsletter or not. And I think that's the basics of everything is that, uh, and I'm here to uh, answer some questions. 
And here I have uh, a website. It's not mine, but this this website, howtomarketagame.com. It's uh, it's created by Chris. I don't remember his surname. I'm sorry, uh, but Chris is someone who has been working with uh, game marketing for years, uh, and he's always uh, writing blog posts and making uh, and sending newsletters about things that are happening in the industry and what you can learn from people's mistakes and what you can learn from people's success. And it's a very good source. Uh, I'm, I, I'm subscribed to his, to all of his uh, newsletters. I'm subscribed to his Discord server because they are constantly talking about things that is happening in the, in the, in the industry that can help us a lot. And then here I also have my email that it's wrong. Uh, my email, it's Claudia1994. It's two nines, not two ones. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but if you want to reach me because you have more questions, I'm all for here. Uh, I don't know if I can correct my, my email right now. I will see. But I see that we have a question here. Uh, sorry. Uh, would you recommend to start a YouTube channel right at the be beginning of the project project or wait until a specific stage to create an audience there? Uh, I think it depends on what type of, of game you are making, what type of project you are working on. Uh, and if you're going to have uh, content to put in that YouTube, if you have content to put at that YouTube channel, then I think it's worth it. But the thing is that most of the time we don't have enough content. So I don't think it's worth for you for you to have a, a YouTube channel that it's going to sit there for like a year up or plus with no new videos. That's not, not that helpful. Uh, and it's not going to help you at all. But if, you, if you're thinking about like, oh, I'm going to show uh, every single stage of creating this game. Uh, and so every single uh, every single week or every two weeks, I will be uploading a new video. Maybe it could be worth it uh, because you will be always, you'll be constantly uh, having that connection with the audience. Uh, it's probably, it's most likely that you won't have like, um, how can I say? Uh, like it's very unlikely that you'll go viral uh, because algorithms algorithm sucks uh, and you will have a few views and a few likes. So if your expect expectation is to create a YouTube channel to have like one, one million subscribers by the time you launch your game, that's most likely unrealistic. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, some people will make it because uh, as algorithm, the algorithms uh, can help you sometimes, but most of the time they don't. If you are lucky that you are the chosen one, <laughs> uh, you can that can help help. Uh, but you have to have content to constantly being there. You know, uh, it's not worth it to create it just unless you are creating it to save the 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 username and just keeping it there on the download, then it's okay because you're just trying to save the username so no one can have it, then okay, I can understand that line of thought. But if you're creating the YouTube channel and then you're posting a video today and then only a new video six months, months from now, and then oh, uh, a new video two months after that, that will not help you to create uh, an audience. You have to have content all the time. So only start the, the YouTube channel when you have enough content to keep it going uh, at least uh, once one uh, once a week or once every two weeks. At least two, two videos a month you need to keep the, the YouTube channel alive. So if you don't have content for that, I would say don't create it. Does anyone have any other questions?
Okay, I think that would be it then. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, send to my email that uh, the guys brought it correctly down for me <laughs> uh, because I mistyped it on my presentation. And if anyone wants the presentation as a whole, uh, newsletter frequency. Uh, I would say once a week. Uh, if you can do it more, uh, it would be better. Uh, but if you're talking about your yeah, a game, spe a specific game, uh, then uh, maybe it doesn't have to be that frequent. Uh, but if you're talking about your indie studio and you have more than one game, then I think once a week. I think it's pretty similar to the YouTube channel. Uh, once a week or once every two weeks. Uh, if you already have a very um, like uh, a very loyal audience, then maybe you can uh, space it a little bit more, like every once a month. But if you're trying to create that relationship with your audience, I'd say to a, to a month, uh, every 15 days, it's a good way to to start and always have something new to talk during the, the newsletter. That's that's a good thing. And that can be changed. Like you will, if people start to think that uh, you are sending too many new, newsletters, they will start to unsubscribe. So that's your first thing that oh, maybe uh, my newsletter are, are not good or maybe I'm sending too much. And then you can try and change it. Uh, a lot of the a lot of those things are like testing. You have to have like group A and group B, and then you'll be making different tests with them. Uh, pretty much like we do for ads, uh, we always have uh, two different groups when we are when we are creating ads on social media. Uh, we have group A and group B, and we send them different types of ads to see what works better. Uh, and that's pretty much what you have to do with a newsletter. You have to have different groups uh, that will receive different newsletters uh, or different frequencies of newsletters to see uh, what works best and what doesn't work. So marketing is a lot of testing, uh, testing, testing thing A, testing thing B, and see what works best for each different game or each different product any different audience. And I think that would be it. And if anyone wants the presentation, I will correct the small mistakes that I've seen here uh, while, uh, while I was talking. And if anyone wants the presentation, I can send them and I can send other informations that anyone might want. And I think that's it. Thank you for having me for hearing me talk for almost one hour straight <laughs> and if anyone needs anything i'm here for to help you guys and i hope i can come back eventually with more information to help you all and i think bye <laughs>